how's it going you're watching Josh's happiness today's video is going to be about reducing your stuff from a large amount to a very small amount I made quite a few changes with the van if you've I don't know if you've already noticed I've got a bit more of a gap here so I will take you through all of those changes now if you follow my Instagram you would have seen all of those changes kind of progress if you don't watch my if you don't follow me on Instagram you know what to do Go and follow me on there now. The link is in the description. So, um, reducing your stuff, a little tour of the van, and um, I'm going to go and see my mum as well uh, at home because she's back from Australia. To begin with, I found that there was a way too much weight in the van. I was struggling to get my clothes off in the van as well, and um, it just, just needed a change. The van pulls so much nicer now. I reckon I've probably lost in the region of around probably 100 to 200 kilos sounds crazy but you'll see i've taken a lot out now to begin with as you can see there's a big space in here that's where i was just sitting i've reduced this box down and i kind of restructured the bed so before i had like a full width scaffold border the way along here so what i've done is i've ripped that in half obviously i've taken a bit of depth out of here that was like dead space and this scaffold board here is single on its own this scaffold board and here I ripped in half so I've lost one two three four whole scaffold boards and I've lost about what about four scaffold boards from ripping these in half there's no there's no supports in the middle now so I've got more room to store things as you can probably see down in there and um, the slats go all the way along now so they they're kind of they weigh a lot less and um, just allow the van to be a lot a lot lighter it's a bit it's a bit more creaky than it was before but I'm not really too bothered about that it, you know it works a lot better than it did before and it's a lot less engineered um, than it needed to be still over engineered in comparison to like most people's vans though most people just make their vans out of ply and like softwood well pallet is softwood yeah whatever so yeah the um, the cabinet which we'll be we'll be looking in later because this is where all my clothes live yes believe it or not that is all my belongings in there apart from a, like, a few things down here I reduced that down as you can see it's a different color on the end to here and um, relocated my Camden Town sign from the other side to here um, new plant well plant in the mix actually there was no plant before and um, just a general decor change you've got the uh, Guinness plaques over there and um, I've kind of moved some things around a little bit. That mirror used to be over there, I believe, if you uh, haven't stayed up to date. So this is the van in general, for the people that haven't seen it before. Um, got a memory foam mattress here, so comfort is almost, uh, sorry, always number one. All of this lot is literally all pallet wood, and um, it's just fired with like a fire torch and then polyurethane varnished, obviously go and watch my series if you haven't seen it before all of these light fittings are LED they're about 8 watt each and I've got one here they're fully dimmable as well on on um, on here so you know there's a nice nice change in lighting depending on what you're doing in here cheeky and um, these uh, these actually 230 volts these lights and I'll show you that in a minute and then these little fairy lights these are all 12 volt and they also double up as like cabin lights when I'm in the front so that's pretty handy as well right I'll take you around the side so if I just show you under here I've got like a couple of boxes here like storage and um, this is all my what like dirty washing spare wheel because the van's like seriously low now because I like like the lowered kind of look so the spare wheel lives in the back I've got like Spare water, oil, things like that if I need it. Under there I've got like a socket set just in case. Um, spare pair of shoes, I only have two pairs. And um, a bin as well, just for um, those uh, used used baby wipes. Baby wipes, most important. Actually, the biggest gon godsend for uh, van life I've kind of found out so far I've actually been living in the van for three months now even though this is like the first proper van life video um, but you'll see that on my Instagram if you follow me on there so go and go and go and follow me basically just go and follow me on Instagram if you don't if you don't already and um, yeah I think that's pretty much it here 
if I just show you the side of the van. So this is the van. So it's a 2007 T5 Transporter and it's done about 120,000 miles and it still pulls like a train. It's the turbo engine, so it's the, it's the good engine. I think it's about 84 brake horsepower, something like that. Not a lot, but it's enough. So coming around here, these um, these are literally retrofit hubcaps from a T1 and T2 a VW camper van, and they're the standard steel wheels. I just retrofitted them. That's all. The process of that is also on Instagram. The van is being lowered on special suspension as well, which I did myself. You can see it's like a red spring. It's uh, called coilover suspension. And um, the front of the van, I've also styled. So you've got like yellow headlight wrap, and I painted the bumpers in the badge all black. So it's like it just kind of suits that that um, Euro style, you know. Under here, this is where I keep all my tools. They're not currently in here, but like it's just the, nice to keep it separate from um, from all the living stuff. And then this is also a nice side door. These are just thermal blackout curtains my sister modified for me. And um, yeah, it's just a different view from the van. I've got like a little space here I can just put clothes at night or like a drink or something. So it's worked out quite nice. And then this is the part I changed as well through here. I took a little bit of depth out of here so I can also get in the van from here. So you can see where I've um, taken, where I moved it over. And also these parts through here before I had quite a lot of reinforcement, which I didn't really need. So I just ripped one piece of scaffold board in half and that's that's ample, it's fine, you know, it's good. Okay, getting into the front of the van. You probably won't see many vans like this and the, um, the process is quite long-winded. I, um, I parkoured the front through here. This is all just to reclaimed wood. It's slightly thinner than pallets, but you know, it works as well. And then I've done all the door shuts as well. And then this um, seat box that the seats are mounted on, I custom made myself out of metal. And these seats are out of a 2005 Mercedes Benz and they're fully electric, fully heated and um, leather. So easy to clean and nice and buckety as well. You know, they hold you in there nice and comfortable for those long journeys. Up in the top here we have um, skateboard sun visors. If you watch Fun for Louis, you might have seen in the tour if he did a, uh, the tour he did of my van. I'll put the link in the description if you want to watch that and you'll also be able to see his hot tub bus that we built for him. And there used to be a centre console here but unnecessary weight. I didn't really use it so I thought I'd take it out and um, these all just still come out so I can get to the important control boxes underneath there. You have a kid size skateboard, um, the same size as these kids skateboards, sun visors and um, I modified it to make it look like a surfboard. Works really well. This is like the mini little control panel. Uh, here you have the um, battery monitor I don't know if you can actually see it will tell you like the voltage and then the, the percentage of the battery as well so it never really drops below about 86 percent which is quite good and that's a completely different battery you've got the 230 volt inverter power through here and then that's the solar panel monitor and then these do the little cabin lights here this one here so under this seat here is all of the electrical system so we have 110 amp hour uh, deep discharge battery AGM is called absorbed glass mat. So it's sealed. It doesn't give off a gas 600 watt inverter I actually need to change this because it's not pure sine wave. So it kind of makes my MacBook charger get a little bit hot and um, I'm a bit worried about that So I'm gonna get a pure sine wave and it's closer to like a house got these and the solar panel controller Which I think I already said anyway, but yeah that just makes sure that it um, doesn't overcharge the battery very clever stuff. Also have a split charge system, so it will charge on the uh, engine of the van when you're driving up the road, which is really handy as well. So um, never really run out of power, to be honest. It's always good. You can kind of pretty much leave all of the lights on all day. So that's perfect for like shows and stuff, showing off the van, because you can just leave it on, uh, go away from the van, and everybody can enjoy what you've done. You know your art. And then. Up on here, there is my solar panel, so that is 90 amp hours, and that's enough. That's enough for um, that battery to stay charged. So before I had like a roof rack up here, 
but unnecessary weight and drag I think it I think it had drag when I was driving so getting rid of that was a you know a pretty big fuel economy saver eating arrangements no cooking accessories in the van no water system basically just do all that as I did before but I eat out instead of eating in now uh, pretty easy pretty pretty good go grab and go market in the UK you can imagine America's even better I know I have a lot of lot of viewers from America so you don't really need to be eating in to stay healthy now like you don't have to go to a fast food restaurant I just binge on avocados every day and yeah it's pretty I reckon you probably average about 10 pound a day if you're careful it's pretty simple I'm back home at my mum's house and I'm going to show you where I used to sleep and where I used to keep my clothes. My mum is now back from Australia. She's been in Australia for three weeks. She's Goodbye, looking very man. healthy and that was really cliche. And then uh, you look, <laughs> your colour, the colour is so much nicer. It's just a bit just of sunshine. Just insulted my mum basically. No, a little bit How of sunshine. How was it? Give us a little lowdown of Oz. Um, it's really big, really, really big place. Um, just everything about it is just big sky and fantastic I really enjoyed it I went to three cities four cities I went to Sydney Brisbane Cairns and a town called Townsville they're all very different from each other Sydney was really interesting and cultural and I enjoyed seeing all the icons like the Opera House and the uh, Harbour Bridge and I went whale watching and saw humpback humpback whales kind of migrating up the coast and that was really wonderful saw them breaching and turning over and tumbling in the water. That was a really great afternoon. Um, I went up to Cairns and went up into the rainforest across a great big canopy above trees, metres and metres high on a great big cable car that lasted an hour and a half. And I also went swimming off Green Island. We did snorkelling and I saw beautiful fish under the sea on the Great Barrier Reef. And it really needs protecting because it's getting in a really bad way. And I saw wonderful things. And my favourite thing was a starfish. And it was beautiful royal blue. Bright blue in the sea. Cool. And that was fantastic. Apart from that, just really great. Just everything was just wonderful. Brisbane's a lovely little city and very friendly. And uh, everyone's very friendly, multicultured. Um, just a really good time. But very, very hot. It's just coming hot. into the spring. So I enjoyed that. Right. And that's why you should travel to see different things, different cultures. I've actually been to Australia twice, but I've never done. I didn't do that much, so that's, looks like I need to go again, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Thanks, Mum. You're welcome. I got something lovely, and I thought you'd really like it. And it's a special little purse, and what it's made of is made from the scrotum of a kangaroo. <laughs> How useful is that? There you are. I'm not going to sniff it, but if you can imagine, someone's plums. <laughs> authentic real kangaroo scrotum because that's the kind of thing you bring back your boy from your holidays <laughs> <laughs> okay so <Ooh. laughs> okay right upstairs so this is my mum's house just uh this is a new bathroom so some electrics are going for uh, last week before she got back so some down lights and then um move the light switch from over there nice um overhead shower it's kind of got like this weird system where um this is wireless so more money than i've got to spend at least nice uh, little blue unit in that there but anyway yeah what we were on to what we were Mainly, maybe doing it. So, I was in here for a little while, um, and I had like a chest of drawers here. I think my sister's moving home again because it's got the housing crisis is so bad. It's just impossible it's to get a deposit together to buy a house. Renting would be the same. Is pretty much the same money as what it would cost you to to um, be paying off a mortgage. So, what do you do? I, I mean. I recommend build a van or whatever, but you know, if you've got lots of stuff and you've got kids and stuff, it just really you can't really. There isn't enough legal that can allow you to live in a bus without getting constant hassle from the authorities, etc. So it's ridiculous. I don't know what the government are even doing. I don't know, they're all just puppeteers. I don't think they really know 
what they're talking about, about the real world, you know? Anyway, like, I was in here for a little while when I had my clothes in the chest, the drawers, and then I started traveling, actually started traveling before here. So I had, um, we had a house a bit further up the road, which was smaller than this, it was like a flat. So I had more clothes than I'd be able to get into a van, basically. The, probably the equivalent to four people's worth of clothes than I have now. So from this room, my sister moved home, so I immediately went into the little box room. Are you ready for this? So this is the box room that I was in. So this is actually the room I was in when I started YouTube about a year ago. Um, I started trying to make vlog, vlog videos and then I made a video, I made a series on Louis' bus build, the fun for Louis bus build. A few complications with that. I had it all live and stuff. Many of you come over from those videos actually, um, and from Louis' YouTube channel. Thank you very much for staying if you did, if you were one of those people. Um, a few complications with that bus build, a few things went wrong with it, etc. Nothing on my behalf, but like the whole build process. And um, it ended up being rebuilt by the company that I now work for, Shred and Butter. That's where we were storing the bus and gym there. Um, said to me, why don't you work, come on, like, do some subcontracting work for me. He said, I like your work. I was like, thanks, so I am. Pays well, pays on time. So, um, yeah, anyway, I was in this room when all of that was going on. And um, as you can see now, it's kind of like a cross between like a makeup room for my mum. And um, that was my mattress. That was the mattress. And it was on the floor there. And um, I didn't. I didn't really need a lot of space. I had my laptop in here. I had like a little radio thing, stereo, I like my music. I don't really watch a lot of television, especially now I'm in the van. I don't watch any television. I very rarely watch YouTube now as well, actually. Probably only watch maybe two hours a week, if that, maybe an hour. Um, I'm so busy. I don't know where my hours go. I think it's just procrastination. It's scrolling through Facebook. I need to, if anybody knows how I can beat that, please uh, let me know in the comments. So this is the airing cupboard, of course. I kind of said to myself, I'm gonna try and restrict my clothes to the bottom two shelves. Obviously, there's a new cylinder, stat, uh, cylinder in here, so the shelves were a little bit deeper. But there was enough for me to get all of my trousers. I had all of my good clothes here, like my nice clothes, trousers and t-shirts. Then I had like all of my underwear and um, had all like my jumpers and stuff here. I limited all my stuff to these shelves. How did I get to that point though? That's the interesting one. So, yeah, let's sit down here. So, how did I get to that point? To begin with, I went traveling in Thailand and that was the first proper bit of traveling I did in 2013. 2013 was my, like my blanket year of travel. So I went to Thailand in April, started moving about a bit, um, done all the island hopping, then came back to Bangkok, went over to Cambodia, done Angkor Wat, all the temples, and then come back into Thailand. And throughout that time, I kind of went south a bit. I got to meet a lot of different families, a lot, lots of different culture, a lot of people that were from the UK, very local to where I live here, actually, in Kent. Um, but they were, they, they'd been doing months of travel, so they'd just become these amazing, inspirational people to speak to. And um, I've kind of, I've, I've learned to love listening to people's stories and, you know, culture-filled experiences. And from those experiences, I got to see lots of people that were less advantaged than we probably are in the Western world here, but they appreciated their life a lot more. And I kind of put that down to the fact that over here, the more you have, um, the more you're gifted, like birthdays, um, Christmas, etc., the more you expect, I think, the more you kind of, you're comfortable with it being there. So without it there, like you feel down about it or depressed about it that's kind of what materialistic aspects are you know if you've got it um, you want more of it but if you think about all of these countries where there's less advantaged people well there's less advantaged people in the UK as well and throughout the whole of Europe the less you have the less you expect and the less you want the idea of it is and what I put down to do to is the fact that I saw people less advantaged with less stuff therefore they appreciated their life a lot more so they were just you know naturally happier 
So that's kind of what I was aiming to do. So I thought, I know, why don't I start reducing my stuff and getting rid of stuff and see how I start to feel. And trial and error, it's worked. You know, I started getting rid of all of my clothes. I, I kind of reduced my belongings. I got rid of my television. And it just it is kind of just naturally made me feel happier. Reducing my stuff has helped a lot and it's been easier for me. But for you, this is the question. So I would probably advise that you you don't have to go and travel and do what I did to realise that you need to reduce your stuff. It's just that if you are thinking about van life, but you're thinking about moving over into a van, transit, making that transition, you need to start now, even if you're not going to be getting a van for the two years, because I started reducing my stuff late 2013. So I'd been to Thailand, I went to Aya Napa after that, done a season. And a lot of travelling uh, means you're taking a lot of stuff with you all the time. And sometimes it's just not necessary to be taking stuff in the hold of an aircraft. It can kind of get in the way a bit. It makes journeys longer. You, it, it builds in that anxiety as if, ah, oh, is my bag going to actually get there? Or is my, you know, am I going to have belongings when I get to my destination? So if you travel with hand luggage, then you're always going to have everything you need. There's no stress, no anxiety. You literally get off the plane, you walk out of the airport and you go to and get on with what you were doing to the, uh, to the hotel, hostel, whatever. So start reducing your stuff now and down the line it will become easier. I That was 2013, it's now 2017. It's been four years, you know, between me reducing my stuff to starting van life. And... Um, it makes general life easier as well because you you're not buying as much therefore you you have a lot more money to do other things and you just renew the amount of clothes you have so once you're you're bored of something or you you're kind of worn out something either sell it give it to oxfam give it to charity and then buy something in its place then like a new a new item so start doing that now kind of go through your stuff things that you don't wear that's how i did it things that i don't really wear as such i kind of just I didn't think about it, I just thought, I don't wear it, get rid of it. And it was hard to begin with, sometimes it's quite hard getting rid of things that you think, oh, but what, I might keep it because of this or that. Just get rid of it, Just, but don't bin it, give it to Oxfam, something like that. So you'll get to the amount of stuff that you'll be able to cope with. Transitioning over again, so from maybe it just being a simple amount of stuff that you can travel with, you'll now have a, a, an amount of stuff that you can cope with and it's gonna be easier. For you to build a van, kit a van out, and go right, that's it, I'm done. Give up your house, sell your house or whatever. You know, give your notice in for the rent. Put all your stuff in your van, off you go. It's just unnecessary, and you don't need all that stuff. You'll never ever wear all of your clothes. You'd probably take you six months to wear all of the clothes in your war in your wardrobe anyway, wouldn't it? So just reduce it down. People, people, people don't care what you're wearing. Like if you think that you're gonna. If you think that people are going to judge you on what you're wearing, then those people aren't even worth knowing anyway, you know? So it doesn't matter that you might wear the same pair of jeans two days in a row. It doesn't matter that you might wear the same clothes on a cycle for, you know, every Wednesday, every week. Alternate it. Change it around. Your wardrobe doesn't need to be that big because it's not about what you're wearing. It's not really... You can still be fashionable. I'm still fairly fashionable. It's not really about what you're wearing, it's about what your life's about. Where's your happiness coming from? And if your happiness is coming from things like clothes and fashion, it's, it's a little bit materialistic. But there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with being materialistic. Obviously, I have, I'm have. i really into drift cars and having cars, they're an item. It's pretty materialistic. But it's the fix of the motorsport, you know, going out and doing the drifting, which makes it worthwhile. So, obviously, if you like going and doing fashion walks and stuff, that's your fix. That's your happiness. That's cool. But even then, you know, get rid of one outfit, buy a new one. Pretty simple. Now, you might, find, might have found that a little bit boring or a little bit um, over the top, but I'll show you what's in my van and then that should technically or hopefully make it a little bit easier to understand. Well, that was a nice little reunion with my mum. Wasn't really a reunion. She only went for like three weeks, but got my, um, got my boomerang and... Uh, Got me, got me bowl sack. <laughs> Put them on the wall in the van. That'd be nice, wouldn't it? Start getting a little memorabilia wall going. I think I might, um, I think I might get rid of the Guinness, the Guinness plaques. 
not really feeling them. I'm going to get something different, something that's not branded, you know. I think then there may be... Oh, by the way, if you're a brand and you want to sponsor my videos, come on, hit me up. I'm, I'm skin, skin. I want to travel, I want to move about. Uh, but I have no money to do so. And even when I earn the money to do so, I seem to still be paying off debt. So if you're a brand, please hit me up. I'm sure we can uh, work something out. Okay. So it's nice to kind of have a bit more space in here now. I can move about a bit. I can just, you know, there was, before there was only like a gap like this big here. So it was a bit of a pain in the ass trying to put things into the bin, stuff like that. So, like, trial and error of doing and living um, van life, it's quite exciting. And obviously I have the main source of oxygen. The only problem I have is that, obviously, because there's not much light in the van in the daytime, it's still pretty dark for the, for the lamp, so I always leave this light on as much as I can to try and provide it with light. It hasn't died yet. It's been in here for probably, I reckon, probably about a month now. A month and it's it hasn't kind of showing it's not showing signs of death yet and it's actually sprouting up the top you see these little bits here it's actually it's actually growing it's blooming so happy very happy okay right what's in this box the box of tricks in here we have all of my clothes so let's just clear a little space here so I can kind of set everything out right to begin with i have a pair of joggers and a long arm top it is starting to get pretty cold in here at night now but i've got this this duvet is a i'll be able to show you from here so this is like um it's like a 10.5 tog so it's actually got if you listen it's actually got goose feathers in it so this is warm enough and I climatize very, very quickly, but it's when you're kind of like sitting in the van, you need some night clothes, something that's just going to keep you warm. Um, I probably like down the line, will get like a windscreen, thermal cover and maybe like a little inline heater. I run the heaters in the van before I go to bed. It stays warm until the morning. I mean, there's like 50 mil Celotex in the walls, 25 in the ceiling. It does stay warm, but when it like when it's warm, but when it's cold, it stays cold because insulation works both ways. In here, okay. So I allow this to breathe so that I don't get any mildew build up, anything growing on the clothes. In here, I have one jumper, two jumper, three jumper. Four jumper, five jumper, one towel, two towel, one coat. I need to get a second coat, but for the moment, just one. I mean, everything I do pretty much involves the same kind of clothes. I work in cars, I do electrical work. I don't really need nice clothes. I don't go out anymore. I've done all of that in Iron Napa. I've done all of that when I was a bit younger. I'm only 25, but I've kind of got that out of the way. I don't really do the partying anymore. I'm on to kind of more happiness building rather than getting pissed and just wishing I didn't drink so much alcohol. So yeah, the hangovers aren't a big part of my life anymore, so that's a good thing. But yeah, I do like a Guinness. What else we got? Underwear times one, two, three. I think I've got six pairs of those. So I'm wearing a pair, there's probably two in the wash. Down in here, you've got a few bits. I think I've got like, yeah, one jumper, um, like some socks. Um, what else we got in here? We've got like a t-shirt and I think there's a pair of jeans in here. Yeah, there's a pair, one pair of trousers. So we've got all that lot. Just throw that down for now. Um, moisturiser. The reason I use this moisturiser is because it's starting to get near winter. I get quite bad dermatitis and of course moisturising the tattoos. Make sure they stay kind of like good probably get a couple more pairs of trousers for the winter but that means i'll probably get rid of a few pairs of shorts to make up the space of that the idea is kind of like grouping out 
pieces of clothes to group in other pieces of clothes. You don't really want to be having any more than what you can cope. So if you're going to get rid of some, um, sorry, if you're going to buy some more, get rid of some. Therefore, you're not ending up with too many. You can't wear all your clothes at once. And I'd probably average it on maybe two weeks worth of clothes. Um, and then you can go to a laundrette, wash them, and then you know work through it. Things like trousers you can wear more than once. Jumpers you can more, more, wear more than once. You'll, I find that I wear a lot of my jumpers without a t-shirt as well. And I mean like one jumper and a coat is enough for like cold days anyway. I mean especially me when I'm working because I'm staying warm. If you're female, I mean a lot, there'll probably be a lot of girls in the, in the comments that say oh yeah but girls need more clothes in this manner and that manner. But if you think about it, a lot of girls clothes are smaller or um, like especially tops and stuff they're smaller than like a guy's extra large jumper so it kind of works in proportion to space you know you won't really technically have any more clothing than I have um, but yeah so from here I mean every day doesn't have to be an accessory uh, accessory every day doesn't have to be a fashion walk but I mean I keep it I keep it pretty branded. I mean, most of my clothes are brand names and everything's pretty stylish. You know, it's not silly. It's not like knockoff brands or anything. And um, so we have two two pairs of linen. So we've got a cover. There's another um, pillowcase there and another du duvet cover as well. Socks wise, I have more socks than I need. One, two, three, four, five, six, probably about four days worth in there, seven. Another pair, so shorts, we have one, two, three, four, and I think that's it on the shorts, four pairs of shorts, and then I have lots of swim shorts. I don't get rid of these swim shorts because swim shorts, they do work as another layer. They keep you warm as well because Obviously, they're quite um, well woven material. And if at any point I do go away, maybe next year in the summer for a few months, I've got lots of swim shorts. So it's worth keeping clothes that don't really take up a lot of space. But I mean, if you don't need them and you don't really wear them, there's no point in keeping them. But obviously, my six pairs of swim shorts or whatever um, are an exception to that and another pair of socks. So that's pretty much it really. There's not really that many, um, that many clothes to it. It's, it's as simple as that. So, I mean, I have the most amount of jumpers and that's because obviously you can layer up if it's getting too cold. And I'll probably get maybe like one pair of trousers to add to what I have. And if I run out of room, I'll get rid of clothes and replace them with other clothes. And if I no, does that make sense? No, I'll get rid of clothes so that there's space for the clothes I've bought. Um, that's pretty much it. You can get your whole life into here. I've had this amount of clothes for the last four months, so it's not impossible to live this way. And some of you may think I'm crazy. I think I'm crazy, but it works. It really does work, and you you know you can live minimalistic. The only thing that would take up more space in this would be obviously cooking and foods. If you were traveling away a lot and you didn't want to keep stopping, then obviously you'd need more space for that. So if you're, if you're thinking about compacting your house down, start now. Like if you want to go and move into a van, you could potentially buy a long wheelbase van, a bigger van to get more in it, but there's no reason to, you know, there's enough, if you want to do urban living, like I essentially do, um, you don't need any more than a supermarket and a few, you know, two weeks worth of clothes. There's laundrettes. I use washing machines at my mum's. I use the laundrette. I haven't used a lot of the laundrette, but I'm trying to kind of get away from using domestic places. I'm going to try and transition over to sharing more in like services and stuff. But apart from that, you know, you can go, you can go four days on wet wipes. It's not hard. You know, you, you'll, you'll find that what happens is we shower so often and so regular that your skin produces oil to try and compensate for the amount we're washing. So if basically you end up dirtier because your skin's 
trying to fight the fact that you're washing off the oil so quick. So you're fine. I found within about two weeks of you know only showering maybe every once three days, every four days, um, that your skin gets better. And my, I had a lot of spots on my back. They're gone. I don't have any spots on my back now. Very rarely get a few spots on my face now. I used to have really bad acne when I was, I was a teenager. Um, I feel genuinely healthier. I feel that we've broken the system a bit. You know, the whole kind of um, society, kind of um, Western world is overkill. It's overkill. We don't. You, we we've kind of gone beyond our needs, and we've made it too complicated. It's over engineered. You know. So yeah, that's pretty much it in today's video, to be honest. There's not really any more to it. I'm going to put all my clothes away again, um, which will take me all of about two minutes. Yeah, happy. Very happy. Very, um, very humbled by everybody's love for my channel. And thank you very much for any feedback. So thank you very much for watching. My name's Josh Abenden. You're watching Josh's Happiness. And I'll see you shortly. Oh, a little PS. I know I said I only had six pairs of uh, underwear. It's okay to wear underwear for more than one day, you know. Well, I think your limit's probably two days, otherwise it's a little bit manky. But after that, within two weeks, if you run out, it's okay to go commando and all. What's wrong with that? There's nothing wrong with it. Roman Egypties have been doing it for a very, very long time. And um, it's the only society that says it's wrong to wear underwear for more than one day. So, you know. Don't listen to what people say because half of it's never true. See you later.